All right, very good. He yes. was just a Walter Swokla for the Veterans Oral History Project. Right. Mr. Swokla, you were in the, the Merchant Marine. Oh, Merchant Marine. Would you like to tell um, us about that? Well, actually, the merchant seamen were uh, civilians. We were, we were not in the military. And we actually, were at, 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 in the maritime, because I went to Sheepshead Bay, I was supposed to have a, a course there six months. Then she, well, it didn't work out that way. Two months the next thing, next thing it was Casablanca. That's where I wound up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, uh, and physical, you were alive. Good, we could use you. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and that's 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 the way. It, but th there was something about it. I, I I just loved it, you know. And uh, so then after that, the, my my first trip was out of, out of uh, Baltimore, and that's when we went to uh, Casablanca. And uh, one thing was imp what impressed me. I know this is going to sort of mess it up, but the worst case of sickness, homesickness I ever had. I'm on, I'm, I'm I'm leaning on the on a rail. And who comes on? Bing Crosby singing White Christmas. And I almost busted out bottle. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to believe it. The, you know, the way it's, it, it's set. It, it's, and uh, so then the, uh, at that, you know, Patton had already come into North Africa or Algeria. Or I, I I don't don't quite. Now is this nineteen forty two? Yeah, forty two, forty three, and so consequently, uh, uh, after that, you come back to the states, and you know it goes to show you that a lot of these fellows, that, there's so little that they knew about us, that they figured, you know, you take the ship across, but I could never get them to understand. That ship has got to come back here. You can't just pile them up and just and, and you you try to get through. Like at the time that I was uh, just a guy got the AVA, and the doctor was asking me. He says, "Why? What the hell? What the hell were you guys doing?" I says, "Not much of anything." I said, "Well, you, you know, I says you see a few ships get hit or you are uh, sunk, but I said when you see." Like this, was it was last year or something they had about the uh, uh, D Day and whatnot at the cemeteries. Yes. See, and uh, we don't have no cemetery because they all we never got we were never fished out. They were there. So when the ship was torpedoed, and that was it. You yeah, there was no, there was no. Uh, <laughs> There was nothing there. There no, nothing left to bury you. So uh Would the destroyer stop to pick people up? No. One ship was set aside, it was yeah, usually a shallow draft, so that to, if they did try to torpedo they they had it marked. In case they, they let go of a torpedo, it, it passed under the ship. But once once your ship went out went down, or you wound up in the water, uh, other ships could not stop for you. They had to wait until the other. Sometimes, you, uh, some cases, some of the guys were floating around in, in whale boats, whale boats, and lifeboats for as much as a, a week before they got around to, uh, to picking them up. And uh, so, the, you, none of the other ships could 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 stop. You had to, the only time you stopped is when you got got to where you were going. And like a lot of them says, oh, you could pick your choices. You know what? Of course you go. No, you couldn't. Huh? It wasn't until you got there, then you knew where you were going. Now, got to your home port or once you set to sea? At sea. At now, sea. see, I used, to, I used to like, I preferred to ship out of Boston. Okay. Because New York, I shipped a couple of times out of there. And in New York, you never knew, uh, you may meet a guy once, and you may never see, meet him again. Whereas in Boston, there was a lot of the fellows lived there. So at most of you get aboard a ship, you always bumped into somebody you had sailed before. 
you know, it, it, it sort of breaks the, uh, the what, what's his name, uh, the tension or whatnot. And, uh, so there was no consistent crew aboard no. every ship? Okay. Because uh, according to, the, according to the, uh, the way it is, and this has been going for thousands of years, that you had a contract for one foreign voyage. When you came back, this, they, they broke it. Now, in other words, you were out of a job. Now, if, the, if, if your mate or, or engineer said uh, he could use you, then you're on day work. But but outside, see, it, it's all it's all broken up. So what happens is when you get back to the states, uh, if he asks you, you know, if your if your chief officer doesn't ask you to stay, don't bother. You know, because some some of these guys were were, were pains, and it, it was a way of getting rid of them. You know, so uh, but uh, and usually. It began to appear that way from when you left from Boston. From Boston, you go to a Halifax, to a, a small convoy, and then when when the New, New York convoy came up, you would meet them out just off of Halifax, and then you would, so you would wind up usually somewhere in Britain, at that, because I I was in, uh, uh, quite a lot of them, Gourock, uh, Scotland, Edinburgh. Uh, uh, Hull. There's a lot of these uh, uh, different ports, and uh, what? And the thing is, so much you didn't you didn't know uh, because even even though uh, now as a quartermaster, uh, be, as, as I'm as standing at the wheel. The uh, what's his name? The chart room and whatnot is right by, behind me, but there's no way. Don't get caught in there because you don't belong there. Because there's a lot of things that that you, you, you that are supposed to be there, but it's it's it's, it's not for the public to, to know about. You know where, where you're going and a lot of these other. And usually, uh, just before convoy leaves. Uh, they have all the captains together and they, they pick out whoever's going to be uh, in charge of the convoy. So consequently, what would happen is all the captains were bo uh, taken up uh, uh, and they, they would give them uh, uh, sealed orders. Now, the only time that he would open those is when we left. Once you drop the pilot, when you left the port, then you can open it up and see what was. They would they would give you a, a lot of your de destiny, a lot of these things that you, ordinarily you're not supposed to get so involved in. See, this this is one of the reasons why this merchant sea when we no cameras, because we were going in areas that we ordinarily you're not supposed to be there. Now, who would load the cargo aboard the ship? Longshoremen, stevedores. So until you were physically aboard the ship, you would not know what it was carrying? Had no idea. They would have uh, different names like glue and some other, but it was all over the, so you never knew just exactly what port. You know, out of Boston, chances are very good that you're going to go to Britain. And uh, like a lot of a lot of the fellas, they, 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 just, they just couldn't, uh, they assumed because, uh, that everything is all, all cut and dry, you know. You, and you no, know, because on a lot of ships, we get to talking, and the, and, the, and the coffee breaks. They had the vaguest idea. Even when you took, like in my case, uh, well, it all depends on what watch I was on. And the uh, the officer, the first, or second, or third mate would, do, or even the, even the chief mate, or the, and uh, forget the captain. Uh, he's not in speaking terms with you. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> I said the biggest joke I see on, on the movies there. Here's the captain. You know what? I said I wouldn't trust that guy in a wheel. You know, <laughs> and I says you know it, it, the first thing you do when when a guy relieves you on on the on the wheel, and you you get you know, how she's steering your your uh, course and whatnot. And when you watch that man walk up the way he grabs a wheel, he knows what he's doing. If he, and that's why a lot of them use they call them plow jockeys. 
you know, as, as if you had a horse in front there. <laughs> but it's, it, uh, and you know, it's amazing. Now, they could tell just how good a wheelsman you were. Standing like the, the mate would be. We had a, what we used to call the flying bridge. That was uh, the, the topmost deck. And uh, so if you stand over there and you look over the stern, and especially if, the, if it's if it's not, you know fairly smooth, and you can see that it's like a road right down the thing there. And if you if you if it's all over the place, you know damn well he's got a, he needs a lot of practice in order. It's, you know it's beautiful. As a matter of fact, I said many times, I could steer a ship straighter than you could steer your car. It's it just. Because you get the feel of a while, after a while that uh, of how uh, how the ship reacts, how she's loaded. Right? Now, what was it you said about the livery ship that uh, she'd slip on wet grass? She would. She would rock on, ra on wet grass. And and part is this. As a matter of fact, we're not too bad as the uh, Corvettes. Later, they used to have them uh, in convoy uh, defending. And uh, same thing. And you look over there, and all you see, boy, that man, that water comes spraying. See, why we had uh, the flying bridge, they would fix it up. Because the Liberty ship, if, at the main, main wheelhouse, you could not look over the bow. Because the way she was built. Whereas you get another 20 feet by going up on a flying bridge, and you can look ahead of them. And a lot of time, you know, in convoy and whatnot, uh, it, was, it was a good thing to, to, to know. And I used to love to be on a wheel with all this green water coming down. Oh. And, uh, and a lot of time, I, I've carried some of these 35-ton tanks. You go you're going through a storm, you you'd look over, you look over, what do you see? All of a sudden, there's a big gap in a bulwark. And the tank is supposed to be strapped to the, to, welded to the deck. He's not there anymore. You, you, you can't, you can't believe it. You know, what water could do. But I did, and and the thing about it, sometimes a wave it hit, it should slam you along. Man, I'm telling you, it's just like someone hit with a sledgehammer. And uh, and the, the the thing about it is, you, you get so much part of it now. Was uh, once once a month they used to have a uh, fire and boat drill. Okay. You were assigned different areas, and uh, so just as soon as you hear that, well, automatically, you know, you're out there. You know, you're by your bo boat station. You're all by the fire. You know, they, they, even before you even think of it, 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 it was so. In, in, I don't know if they do it in, in, in peacetime, but I know that at that time. They uh, they used to win, uh, but uh, and I say the thing again. Well, you know, you, you didn't bother changing clothes because you always slept because hey, when 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 that thing let go, uh, you don't have time to do anything. And uh, but uh, all you had that's that's the time of. After a while, you got put, you, so we would take a bucket, fill it, fill it with water, a toilet plunger, do our laundry that way. It, it works. It works. And so, uh, but, uh, and then I remember north of Scotland. Now, all the time, you're going ahead, so you think. I never knew that actually, though the ship was facing Ahead, she was being sent back. The, the the gale was just forcing us back, and all the time, you know, you figure you're going ahead, and then you wonder, wonder how come you know, gee, we're we're a couple of days short of what we were supposed to be. I even heard of uh, like uh, with that national the international dateline. Right. Now when I came when I came back. We, uh, and you're talking about one part, he says, well, it's nothing unusual that some of the, uh, uh, usually the second mate was the uh, uh, navigation 
and we usually the the captain would go along, you know, and they'd match, you know, see how they balance out. And he says, yeah, some ships, he says, uh, they lost two days. Some of them, they were a day ahead of time because they didn't figure that that day, international dateline. That when you when you just as soon as you cross over, you you've added a, a twenty four hours that you didn't have before. But uh, it's a, it, it, it's interesting there that uh, you, you you can't shake it, and uh, there's a lot a lot of this that uh, what what I really liked about it is that women and booze forget it. I. I like to be able to walk down the street and just observe. And uh, chances are pretty good. London, England is not the same as it was 70, 75 years ago. People were very friendly. Now, if you were, if you were walking down the street, and you, say sometimes you'd come over and you come, you're not quite sure just where to go or, or someplace. And there will be somebody, can I help you? And they will go out of their way to show you where the place was. And then they'd walk back. And he says, you, know, you just couldn't. Now with the, with the blackouts. And now they, they used to have what they called it, uh, the pubs. The pub was not strictly for drinking because usually they had benches around. Uh, and uh, there were family affairs. The kids are over there running around. In, in the, and, uh, and the thing is, Oh, they, they sing songs. Come on, Yank. Come on, sing a song. And, and yet, you know, in the blackout, you, you would go, you'd miss it. You'd open the door, and you thought it was a pub. <laughs> You're sitting in somebody's front room. You know? And you think, they, they, oh, I, I, I think my son, I said, what the hell are you doing in here? You know? And no, oh, it's, it's right next door. They bring you right, right to the place. Yeah. And, so you you would say well, you you want uh, a, a pint you know uh, and uh, their their beer a lot of people I liked it. it it isn't that it isn't that strong but uh, and it's it's you know it's on the weak side but it's a warm right? yeah yeah there, there is no uh, uh, <laughs> there's you don't have to get it that way but uh, there's a, there's a lot. And I've, basically what it came out is this. Now here it is, all this time. What the hell are we fighting for? You talk to those people. Basically, he's got a family he wants to take care of. He wants a house, you know, a well home and whatnot. He has no interest for having six and, and all this. It's, it was those idiots that we put in office that ca caused all the problems. And... Uh, so you, you say you, you you talk to the different ones, and it's it's, it's amazing. It's like, you know, a lot of times if it wasn't for the language, it was just like I was talking to myself, because I, I look at it the same thing: my family, home, and whatnot. No, uh, no, you take like even even with the J Japanese or with the Germans. I'll admit, the first time I saw a, a German. True, and they they had nailed because when we came over, we we brought about a hundred uh, German prisoners uh, after the war. We landed off of Staten Island with, uh, uh, yeah, we had them on, on on board. They they had a military, but nobody paid any attention because they were kids, and a lot of them they still had the tags on their on their uniforms. In other words, they had no sooner put the things on when we, we nailed them. You know, so, and the uh, and they wanted they needed they they wanted something to do. Now, you, if you go down in the engine room, and usually you know you you got grease on the floor and whatnot, but then they 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 talk, talk the old man and whatnot. Hey, certainly, they sent them down the engine room, and the plates, or like mirrors, the way they clean them. Just, just to keep themselves occupied. The only thing is, like I'd be working on deck, 
And I could not understand, because they had to run the ship. They weren't going to go do anything. In, in, in most cases, I was a head taller than any of them. So, uh, so I'd be working, and, and as they come walking down the deck, all of a sudden they make this loop around, around me. And so, so something, so, so we, we're having coffee, uh, coffee time, and I'm telling them, I said, what the hell is going on? And they're laughing. <laughs> because you know what we did? We told them you were Russian. And that scared the hell out of them. <laughs> you know, but that was the, the first and last time that I ever saw a German, uh, what's his name, soldier, or what would have been. And these were kids, you know, he said, what the hell are you going to take? But, you know, hey, look, if you're on the, on, on the back end of a gun, this guy's going to look, hey, if you don't kill, if he, if, if you don't kill him, he's going to kill you. This is the way, it, and you take like, when you, even, I never got to Japan, but I didn't, and yet you, 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 you talk to him and you figure, so what the hell are we fighting about? Basically, they're looking for the same thing. They don't give. They don't give a, a two hoots in hell with this, this Hitler. As a matter of fact, in the beginning of the war, the first thing we should have done: gone up to Hitler, put a bullet in his head, been him all over with. You know, but they had the people so buffaloed. Now you here you here you're hating somebody, and you never really met him. The propaganda, because we pulled them with the Japanese, the Japs. Don't you call them the Japs now? All of a sudden, you know, they, you're violating their uh, constitutional rights. You say, what the hell's going on? And, and you get, and at that time, you, a lot of these, uh, uh, we would get uh, uh, seamen from Denmark, Norway, that you know, when, the, when the Germans moved in, they, they took off. And, the yeah, so they, so they, uh, so what they did is they went to England. Next thing you know, they worked over and they'd go on, on, on American ships. And, uh, no problem. Like a lot of people were saying, gee, you know, with all the different, like, uh, France, Holland, Belgium, uh, uh Germany, uh, North Africa. This is, well, uh, with all these, how, how'd you ever, how, how'd you talk to them? You just never had to. Now you said when he went to Russia, that was... Really yeah, I, well, I, I could understand their language, or I, I could speak it. What I found, carry an American dollar bill. You'd be surprised how many people will talk to you. You may not, it, 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 it may not be that clear, but you know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that America, but at that time, now America, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. It's it, with this utter stupidity that's, that's going on in, in uh, Afghanistan, all that. It's uncalled for. And that you have to bend over. See, I was a great believer that, uh, uh, that, uh, oh, it, it, that, I, when I used to, in, in, the, in the service there, before I, I got shipped out, I used to get in the ring, box, and I used to love it. There was nothing like it. But uh, the, the thing about it is, see, a lot of, a lot of people, you, you might have bumped into that yourself. For some unknown reason, some guy will step, you know, and, and you back up. You figure, no problem, you know. But eventually comes the point you can't back up anymore. So then, I know, I know that that's recording. <laughs> I, I was going to use a more crude term, but <laughs> finally, you, you tell the guy, "Look, I backed up enough for you. Now, if you want it, I'm going to feed you exactly what you're looking for. You may not like what you're going to get, but when your rear end hits that floor, then you know this was it." And uh, as a matter of fact, surprising. A lot, of, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these older men thought I, I was a veteran, you know. That, uh, but I always, I, I always played it cute, you know. I mean, mixed in, you know that. Uh, <laughs> well, that part is just, I know all, all the all all the works and whatnot. Wire, wire, uh, uh, 
that you had to work. In other words, as an AB, I was on deck. I was supposed to work on any anything, any anything that had need to be done. When the bosun told me to take care of it, he knew I was going to say I could take care of it. And uh, and uh, whereas as far as the ordinary seamen, they were uh, uh, according to the law, they couldn't work no more than about uh, twelve feet above the deck. That that was the law. But me, hey, if they had a ladder up up, up, up on the cross trees, I could go up there. Oh, it was great. It didn't bother you at all. And uh, I used to love the uh, get up in heights. I remember as a kid, we lived in South Windsor, and I used to love, you know, when the, I got a storm, a, a bad one, and, and climb a tree, and just, it was, oh, I, I'll tell you. And the same thing, you're, you're up there, and <laughs> it is great, you know, to, uh, but uh, it, it, it comes back you know, uh, as, as time goes by. And, uh, but so, so much, I said, why is it? Now, I was surprised. I, I had a, a younger brother who was with the 3rd Marines, sent me four, four trips to uh, Vietnam. And the first time, oh, gung, oh, man, he's going to get himself a shotgun. So it's just as soon as the gooks start coming in, he said, we're going to finally got to the point, let them take that damn country and go, we're get, the, get us the hell out of here. But uh, outside of that, you, you know, you didn't, uh, we seem to get get along a lot better with with the, the average person in the thing. I, I know a lot, a lot of them, they, they've learned the, the points, you know, over time, because at our time, over there, World War II, the countries had a lot of respect for us as Americans. Today, all they, all they want to do is beat you out of a buck. If they, if they can give you the shaft, good, they'll take it. And uh, it, But there was so much to be learned that uh, and a lot of time I says, I... Uh, even more so now that my about a year and a half my, my wife passed away and uh, so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bachelor and a short timer and uh, but uh, so anyway come to find out I never knew that I had a Japanese sister-in-law never told us it wasn't until my, he, he had passed it on to my sister, my sister. And what had happened is, in the Marine Corps, he says he had it made. He's a boy, when he was stationed in Japan, and, uh, and then a lot of time he'd wind up going, going to uh, Vietnam. So he met this, uh, on a train, he says he met this Japanese girl. There was something there. I said, yeah, I, I know it, I know it. The same thing happened to me and my wife. That uh, it was there, you know, it, it just like you, you were looking at a, at a picture. This was it, you know. You just so uh, her father was a graduate of Columbia University. He was a sergeant in the Marine Corps, and he says they always, always to keep ribbing him because when when he was on the night shift, you know. Uh, no problem, time for him to go home. The car was waiting for him at the gate. The chauffeur, I bring him home. He didn't sleep, <laughs> he wasn't sleeping in the barracks. And, oh, I'll tell you, he says, it was, and. Uh, so her father was a sergeant of the Japanese. My, my, my brother was a sergeant. Oh, yes. Her father was a graduate of university, uh, the, the, Columbia? Yeah, you know, there was a, he, he had graduated from there and, went, and then evidently got, had gone back to uh, Japan. And he says, the treatment that he got, man, their, their, their son was home. And what do I, what'd you know? They were uh, uh, driving a car 
got hit by a truck. She was killed. And uh, he wound up about four months in the hospital. And uh, so at that time, they were to re-enlist, they gave you $3,000. So uh, he said, that money I took, and I, I gave it to her family for, for, for uh, I don't think it's quite a tomb or anything like that, but it's just that... Uh, Some sort of memorial? Yeah, to her. <laughs> and so when uh, my sister was telling me, I said, you know, it's going to be interesting. I said, now, say, if if I ever went into that cemetery where, where I, I, don't, I don't know anything about it, and I saw there's a tomb, tombstone, or uh, and it says S-W-O-K-L-A, and the rest of it in Japanese. I said, is that where she buried? How, how would you ever find something like a Russian name in a Japanese cemetery. But he's, and he, he went nuts. He was not the same guy that, uh, as far as he was concerned, that was it. He was through. He was through. He retired from the Marine Corps, but uh, uh, took the drink and what? We And then when he, when he uh, took us, when he uh, gave up the Marine Corps, you know, he retired from there, he disappeared. We, we we had the damnest time trying through the through the Red Cross wood trying to locate him, and uh, the only bad part is this. Yeah, all these is you send us a letter. Now we will take that letter and send it to him. He will decide whether he wants to talk to you or not. So hey, why not? He's my brother. He's my brother. The uh, you, you can't just say hey because all of a sudden he's gone into dr drinking and. and, and, and uh, that, uh, but then he took off down down south there, and I don't I don't know what. But uh, see, what they're finding out now is an awful lot of this, and I and I, I, I can I can I can understand that all this time you know now they're finding out here in in uh, in Afghanistan, Iraq. That there are effects, even from the from the you know from your activities during the war, the shooting and whatnot, and you you can't shake it. You know, all of a sudden it's, it's just there. And uh, but they figure, like uh, if you recall what Patton was saying about this one guy, he was going to take a ball and shoot him because the guy didn't. Uh, uh, he was calling it quits. Slapped. Yeah, and yet you know it's a funny thing. I liked. It, I never met Patton. We were we. Were, we were in the same part of the world <laughs> at the same time. I never met him. But that was his problem. The only thing is, in his position, he could cover it. Because, uh, yeah. And uh, because, hey, he didn't have to do his laundry. He, didn't, he had a, 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 what we call him, a valet or someone that took care of him. All, all, everything that he needs, and uh, the only thing that bothered me is when he landed uh, in uh, uh, what's his name in North Africa there at uh, uh, Casablanca. Now I've I've always had this screwball idea. This I don't give a darn. I'm responsible for these men. They're de they're dependent on me. Why would I let them sleep? Because in, in in the desert, it may be hot as uh, all get out during the daytime, but at night you got you got to put a blanket on. And these these guys they were taking uh, uh, cereal boxes, flatten them out so they could sleep on the ground. He was forty miles away in a, in a hotel. I says you know it changed the whole because if you are if you expected these men to. To back you up, and, and why did you treat him that way? I, f I figured, hey, look, if we can't have a guy, uh, haven't got enough tents for all for all of us, hey, we're all going to sleep out in the open. But uh, you know, these guys, uh, I don't know. There, there is a 
there there is a, a, a an attitude that you just don't like, and uh, especially when I used to call them the shiny pants set, because a lot of guys that was in Washington, hey, ninety day wonders, yeah, they they were, and yet it's just, and you're telling me, how come you're not there? You know, I figure if I'm gonna, if you expect me to take your chance, what's wrong with you? Now, is it a similar situation aboard your ship where you never no. saw or interacted with the captain? No problem. Did you, if you got on the ship, you wouldn't hear this, uh, sir, sir. This, this is, that, that's for the bird. And uh, because in a lot of cases, there have been captains who were rough, yes. The only thing is, when you come back to port, you sign off. You would never see the guy because during the night when I, he would, if he knew that somebody's waiting for him, just as soon as he gets off the gangway, somebody's going to lay him out. They don't give a damn. A big, and like a lot of times, they say in a lifeboat, you're not so. If a submarine come alongside, wants to know who's the captain. Well, a lot of them, the captains would you know put on. And I used to tell them, I says. Well, for some of these captains, this is no problem. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell them, but I certainly would point. <laughs> this, but this, this is the, this is the way, you, and uh, no, no problem with, with, with the, you know, you, you, you treated them as uh, as the the guy in charge, but uh, you don't go over overboard, you know, like uh, what's his name. Uh, uh, you know that, that you're catering to him and whatnot because after all, he's baloney. That uh, and usually those those officers like that. A lot of times you'd bump into them in a, in a pub. You get along fine. He had a job to do. You had a job to do. And as a matter of fact, it made it a lot easier on both of you because, hey, what he wants to do is line up fellas in his watch that knows that if anything goes wrong, I can depend on these guys. And uh, you 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 just you just need it. You you can't uh, you can't get away from. Them. Now, Liberty ships. I I love that thing. What was the name of your ship? Uh, first one. Well, the first one. You, you never believe it. What was the name of the street? Harvard Street. Harvard, Harvard Drive. That was my first ship. The SS Harvard Drive. No, uh, uh, Harvard. Harvard. Yes. yes. And, uh, the uh, there, there was so, so we all uh, the Harvard when you know, but uh, it, the, the same. I, I wound up living on the same street that I <laughs> sailed on, and uh, but uh, one thing I did notice the uh, a lot of the Liberty ships they were having but cracking just for the wheelhouse number three hold. You know, the, the flex. Were they riveted or welded? They were welded. And this is something new. Uh, that uh, they didn't, they hadn't been using, uh, w you know, welding them. Especially when you get up north, you know, up, up beyond the Arctic Circle. The, 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 the what's the name, because more brittle. Mm -hmm. and, and I always had this feeling, especially when I was on a wheel. You see, a Liberty ship... When she's when she's empty, because the midship, the uh, engine room is in, all in the center, and you're, and then you got your 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 uh, the bow, the stern, and I've always had this feeling on the wheel that if you took it took a long uh, stick, just held it in the middle and shake it like that, this is what happens on the ends. A lot of people used to give me an argument. He says, it does, you feel it. That you take like a, a long piece of tubing, just hold it in the, in the center, and that's, this is what's going. So when it's loaded, that happens is it's on the ends that you get the, right. and this is where you're a lot of, so finally when they, they started what we used to call a belly band. Start about midway to, of uh, number one, up until midway of number five, and it was about 
oh, about four feet wide, and they had uh, riveted a lot, and that stopped it, the, 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 the Kraken. Just in that one? Thing. Yeah, just just because because with the, with the uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of times, sometimes when you, when you you just for the hell of it, you know, you you you're standing by number number three, looking down, and you see the crack, <laughs> and it never seems to bother you. You're looking at that thing, and you see it widen, close, widen. You know, hey, see at that time, <laughs> you know, you didn't give a damn. You know, you, you, you were an idiot to go. And he said, "See, this is why, when it comes to war or anything like that." The young ones are the, are the best ones to take because once they, they, they've learned something and they've been there wrong long enough, that's why you take like a sergeant and whatnot, or hey, uh, he doesn't even get his uniform dirty. Let the other guys go slopping in the mud because he knows how to hide. It's, 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 it's amazing. But I, you learned an awful lot. And I says, most importantly, I, I really got an education. I, I, I put in a, a week, uh, I was uh, at trade school in, in the drafting department, and I figured, you know, up the line. And then it was something, I don't know, it just, uh, it just, it, it just didn't seem right. But uh, I remember, like, uh, one time walking down Main Street in, in, uh, in Hartford, and they used to have the... The elevators come come out of the sidewalk. They, 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 yeah, you see a metal metal plate, and it would open up. They, there was a signal, you know that. And then there was a uh, when it closed, then the fellow would throw a cover over it. And I was it just crossed Pratt Street, bang! And I could have sworn for us, I would jump as high as that building. You know, it, it was so 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 uh, used to that. Uh, but uh, no, I, I, and you know the funny part, I was married, my wife and I were married 63 years. And uh, I, I went to school with her brother, and the first back, now of all the things, I, know where, I, I knew where he lived, but I didn't know the number, street number, Albany Avenue. So I, I got off the taxi cab and then I went up there and I didn't see the name. Well, you know, they usually use these, put them down, you know, that the, the top one was the, uh, or, or one, two, and three. And uh, so I see the name Ken Somo. I, I knocked on the door and this little girl comes out. And she was, I was only a month and five days older than she was. That was it. That was it. That, Just like your brother. The photo. Yeah, Just the image. Uh, but I didn't know at the time I'm going to send. This is very good. This is going to put you to sleep if you're listening to it. <laughs> I no, in, in a way, it's it's, it's interesting because see, like mo most of the time, uh, when I, when I when I got the medals, I uh, the Gazette, uh, I I got. Uh, Somewhere in the back room there, we had pictures taken, you know, they broadcast. So I have a very, one of the best of friends. And uh, I don't know how come he stuck with me, but we were both seamen. And uh, so I was surprised that uh, I've only got about four letters, and he was one of them. And one asked, how, how do you get it? Because... See, as long as you had made the made that uh, merman's run, the Russian government was giving it to you. As a matter of fact, they were willing to go so far as to give you a trip to Washington D.C. to the embassy to get it, and I was in no shape to be <laughs> doing the trip. And uh, but they mailed it to me, no no problem whatsoever. And uh, the uh, but you had to say. Uh, now, really, from what I saw there, the Germans had, it's just one big mess. All, all of Europe was. And uh, that was the first time in my life that uh, 
See, we used to get uh, from uh, before we came in. They used to seal the uh, the uh, what's his name. Uh, you could buy candy or whatever cigarettes, but then once you come into port, they they put a seal on you. Couldn't do that. So uh, so I used to get uh, like a lot of chocolate bars. You know, twenty four in, in a box. They get a couple of boxes. Because, you know, walk around, at some, a lot of times you, you talk to some people and uh, or they give you directions. Or, so I'd give them a bar of candy or sometimes bar of soap, you know, anything. Like, and it you know, make them feel good because, believe me, in their, in their conditions, they, they, that was only, that was the best thing you could have done for them. That was all over Europe? At least the countries I were. And, see, one thing, if you went in Europe, one thing that you're not, you're not going to see, cats or dogs. They just were not around. Because people wound up eating them. What was that? What was it ill? No. And uh, so, uh, in, 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 in Russia... Now, what, what the Russian government, they, when, when you get there, they gave you 100 rubles. This was a, a reward for making the trip. What uh, if, you didn't get, if you didn't make it? I don't know what the What good is it going to do with it? So anyway, uh, all you could, they had the, what they call an interest hotel. That was the only thing available for uh, outsiders. And... Uh, because you you were you were not supposed to get involved with the people or you talk to them or anything like that. So you talked before about being able to walk around London. Yeah. That just did not happen in Russia. In Russia, it did. not And how I found out, I asked uh, the the, ki the kids, uh, and s skiers and whatnot. I'm surprised the Russians they don't have more of them because over there with the snow and whatnot, kids are sitting out there shooting all over the skis and what. So I asked one of the kids there, uh, how, what interest hotel? And uh, it's hard to tell because everything was all blown up, blown all to hell. So the kid told me, he said, okay, uh, thank you. I gave him a couple of candy bars for, you know, thank you. I was about 20, 30 feet away. I, I guess it's, I turned around and I, I used to see this guy, you know, the police. Big uh, shop got there and, and the big uh, gray coat and whatnot. And I, I turn around and here he is ta ta talking to the kid, grabs the candy bars with a. He says, This is the police. And now, now I know why you don't mess with them. And uh, I said, Gee, you know, I, I, but I didn't want to get involved because I, I could have gone up and said, Look, fella, give the kid the candy bar. Here, I, I'll give you a couple. You can you can have it yourself. You don't have, you don't have to go to that. You don't have to do that. But the part is this, in their country, hey, that's what is acceptable. You know, some of the, some of the things that, you, you know, a lot of the, like I say, you can't talk politics, you couldn't talk politics, you couldn't, uh, uh, no, no uh, American newspapers or, or uh, uh, magazines. And you couldn't take them sure. And you know, like now, now our, some of our wounded uh, soldiers, uh, your know, rest and recreation. Mm -hmm. The Russians didn't believe in that. They were down in a hole. You see, some of the hand in a sling, head all bandaged up, and he's over there handling cargo. You know, to to to, uh, to be up where they put the hooks in. And the thing about it, like some would say. Did you mess with the Russian women? I said, forget it. I said, I love life a lot better than that. Because those women, when you see him, they have 100 pound sacks, a flower, flipping it on their backs and whatnot. And I says, and I'm gonna, I says, that woman would break me in half. <laughs> I said, and, oh, I said, and, and, they, they, and so this one soldier, he was down in a hole, and they, see, you had a, a, a wire sling, and then you had these claws that would, 
when you bit into the side of the crate and you lift it up, that would lift the crate up. Right. Well, this guy happened to be in the wrong position. One of those claws well, tore his jaw off. Oh, they took care of him. Threw him in one corner until he got in the way. Then they, then they hold, hold him up, throw him on a dock. And he says, these are there, the people, right? They're supposed to be one of theirs, but why do you treat them like that? Well, anyway, our chief engineer, man, he, he goes war, go, goes down on the, on, the, on the, what's his name? And there's a, gang, a, 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 a soldier at the gangway, and he grabs a first, what's that, first, uh, to treat him all like for cuts and whatnot? First aid kit. First aid. <laughs> and we look at him, he says, you know, Dad, what, what happened to this guy? For now, he must be, he might, he might be dead. You're not going to put a band-aid on that. <laughs> this is good. So the Russian soldier from the gang, gang was, he says, go ahead, leave him alone, leave him alone. He says, the man is dying. He says, don't worry about plenty more where he came from. And these guys called Kamarad Baloney. But uh, I, but the basic people are altogether different. Like, I remember, well, I was the only one on the ship that could speak Russian. So anyway, uh, we bumped into some Russian sa sailors. They, they were they were Navy. And uh, <laughs> so, hey, I'm... One thing, I'm not going to go straight off. And, and I don't give a darn how many guys are with me. I'm not going to. So this one so uh, Russian sailor said, hey, uh, you, you're looking for, for a woman? And so I'm telling the other guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. As as, hey, I got one home, which, which is all the woman I need. When, when, I, when I get there, when I go. Okay, so we went, we walk in this barn. When the door closed, just as black as pitch. Oh, I said, oh boy, oh boy! I said, we're going to be in trouble. I said, hey, we won't. Somebody will, uh, 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 will give us the business. We won't even know who they, who did it. And all of a sudden, the door opens, and I did find out how the Russians got through the the winter. And there was a couple of young girls there. And one of them, one of them was the guy's girlfriend. I said, and you're peddling her? What the hell kind of a so so anyway, in one corner of the bill uh, of the the room, that thing it must have been about five foot high. And what they used to do is, it was uh, what the heck is like ceramic, and they used to sleep on it okay. during the winter time. But evidently, what they used to do was put the wood from the outside and and and. and uh, so, uh, when, when it all comes up, we all got thrown out. <laughs> Get to work. And the fire says, I'm, I was the one that understood what she was saying. <laughs> Where's the other guys? Oh, yeah, yeah, forget it. But, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you, and what was a dead giveaway? We brought from Murmans, uh, we brought 150 Russian. Uh, seamen, uh, sailors, with uh, and there, there was the 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 the, the, the uh, lieutenant and his and his fanny oh uh, yeah, and so so what they it's surprising how where would we get around they knew who, who to go you know to talk to so I'd be up on a bow lookout you know hey, beautiful weather and uh, so these two two guys come over says we're, we're going to Gurak Scotland. I said, gee, I'm glad that they told you. I wasn't even quite sure that we were going there. So anyway, uh, so they said, well, when we go, you know, uh, knowing that uh, they would like to pick up souvenirs and whatnot. And uh, all I'm thinking, you know, I'm talking to nice, friendly guys and whatnot. They're telling them what a wonderful place Moscow is. I never saw it, but I said, if it's any, it looks anything like what you got over here, you're, 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 pray, you're praying to the wrong God. So it is, anyway, uh, and they would tell me uh, in Russian, and then I would tell them the English word for it. And uh, so, so the thing about it is, 
And then oh, we're talking back and forth, and then all of a sudden, the the colonel with his uh, <laughs> come walking up there, and all he said to, to he looked at them. He says, uh, "What are you doing here?" And they just melted away. Well, I didn't. I I, I didn't know because uh, the officers now the. They did not eat the same thing we did. They took over the kitchen in the uh, or the galley uh, at night, okay. and uh, so and the men they they were just just in the in the in the hold pour big drums of sauerkraut. What's his name? Vodka in five gallon, uh, you know. Uh, bottles and uh, but uh, when I saw that I says this don't go for me and as you would know we had a captain at that time and I, and I just thought well thanks to me we wound up in a crow's nest okay. yeah and before that you know you could uh, we would uh, be on deck, you know, just looking over the board. <laughs> and I said, I knew. And the old, when it, when they, they must have told the, our captain, and we don't we don't associate you know like that. And when it when it, when it was going, then I knew damn well what. The, and I says, I, I told the rest of the guys, I said, look, as far as I'm concerned, if he was any kind of a guy. All he told me is this, I'm in command of the ship. You don't tell me where you can station my men or anything like that. But you know, friendly, forget this friendly, because you, you, the short time, I was only there a week, but you begin to find out there's a lot of this stuff you don't like. And it's not as classy as they would have you book. But... Uh, now what kind of material were delivering to them? Union. Just about anything you can bring on a ship. Sometimes uh, you brought uh, trucks, uh, planes, our, our planes. They would take the, the wings off, and then they uh, cover them over. Uh, then they have, have pad, 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 pad eyes in the deck. They, they, we would strap them down, you know, so they, you wouldn't lose them. Uh, food supplies, anything they wanted. Uh, bomb, bombs, 500 pound bombs, anything you want. Because when, when we got hit, all you got is that one big blossom. And there was nobody that says, hey, that was me that went up. <laughs> but, he, you know, it never bothered you. I know you slept all, all the time. You slept with your clothes on because... And uh, you know where every everything was. Every time you went anywhere, it was always oh, carried a life jacket and whatnot. But uh, now, how about up in these those North Atlantic runs? How long could a man survive in the water up near Romansk? Well, I could I could be generous, five ten minutes. As a matter of fact, when you're listening, especially when you're on a lookout. Right? The sound of the ship going through the water. There's something there that it, it sounds to me. It's almost like like when the first time that ice is beginning to form on a thing, and it's very glassy and what, yeah, and that you 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 got you, that sound. You go yeah, and that. Uh, but uh, otherwise. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It, it just, I, I'm, I'm glad that things worked out for me the way they did because I learned a hell of a lot that ordinarily I would never, never. Because, uh, you know, they, they, those people were brought up altogether different from us. And uh, because, you know, you figured. Even even though you're not, you really don't know them. You're not you're not real friends, but you you can you you can buy, get get through with them. And I found, see now, Russian basically is a Slavic language. Right. 
Now I found, now when I was in Shebenik, uh, Yugoslavia at that time, I don't know what the, what's happened to it now, that, that was a Slavic language. So the, uh, so when you're on, uh, on uh, what's his name, uh, gangway watch, you know, you, you would have all, and then they, they'd have a, a soldier, and, you know, he, in the beginning, very formal, you know, you can't calm down, young fellow there, and, uh, you know, you talk, talk something to me, no, 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 strictly, you know, I said, okay, so, uh, so anyway, he comes, uh, he comes on a board, you know, we're, and we're talking, and I, and he's talking in his language. I'm talking in, in, in English, or, or I'm picking up some of the Russian words, and they fit. You know, I, in other words, I could get across to him, you know, what I was talking about, and then he, he what he's talking about. It's a, it's fantastic. You know, the only thing is, what you had to be. Uh, then all of a sudden, he's walking back and forth, and I never. You know, you, us poor teachers, you know, we don't, we don't, uh, who have to be, you know, if the old man came down and looked, at me, so you turn around, hi, Cap, how you doing? But, and, uh, but from the dock area, where, we, where and we were the only ship there, because, the, and this, this was pretty much at the, the end of the war, but if you look up through, up the hill, there's a, like an alleyway going through, and all of a sudden you see the, the guy, uh, there's, there's a, uh, a guy appears there. Police. So th this is why all of a sudden, you know, he's not talking to me anymore. He's just marching back and forth, you know. And it's, you know, how do you live? How do you live in something like that? At that point, your family's only been out of the country for 30 years. Yeah. And, uh, so I, I don't, I, I don't know, uh, uh, so, so because of those experiences um, during the Cold War, is that still how you thought about the day to day, the Russian? Uh, yes. But now, at the, at the time I was in, in the uh, at the home, mm -hmm. and I had this. Now this one girl come, one woman because they had uh, something they they were in my affect my speech, so they had this. Uh, therapist or something that was and I'm listening to her and I says boy that 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 voice that I never met her but when you hear a Russian talking there's a giveaway in the way in the way the the, the way they talk and, and and whatnot so finally I asked her I says uh, are you Russian she says yeah she came from Siberia she and her husband, they were, they were teaching, and they were teaching in Yale University, and you know, then this one here, and they would, uh, uh, so we're talking back and forth and whatnot, and uh, as a matter of fact, I think I, I taught her a lot of things about Russia that she didn't know, because my daughter, she's, uh, she's, uh, runs the office for a, uh, the college in in uh, Manchester. Manchester Community College. Yeah, and uh, so what they do is when they when they have books that they want to get rid of, they don't sell them. They have, there's a shelf that they put by the door. You look through any of those books, you want them, take them. It's just a, and uh, so I had my father told me about some of the things that. He knew from practice the way things were done at the time in back in the in the thirty up until thirteen when he left. In Tsarist Russia. Uh, yeah, and uh, so anyway, uh, and then you begin to find out why the downtrodden had no tr trust in their in their government or or any of the higher ups. Because the way they, hey, you were like an animal, a higher up. You were, you went to somebody else or somebody that you were taught or some guy who was working for you. You treat him like an animal. 
Nothing. T take a club and use it on the guy. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. You know? And so, well, anyway, what my father said when he came over and he, he hit it big. He says, and I, I could have gone back to Russia. Well, here we call him a ranch, right? Over there, what the heck they they had a name for? No, Dacha, that, that's uh, like like a holiday or something like that. Or uh, uh, like uh, living, uh, like a second home, Dacha. All, all the big shots. So anyway, and uh, so, and he, so when, I, so when I'm, I'm reading that book, and I said, I'll be damned. I said, my father was telling me the truth. If they got you, if, if, if you got in their way, think nothing of giving you a swift boot or, or something like that, bang you, because they were the higher ups. You were supposed to, and, hey, look, I've always felt as this, I kneel only to God. And if he's a man, forget it. There's no way I can, it, it just, it, it just, it just it isn't, I wasn't brought up that way. I treat them like, like I, I want, you know, back and forth. I, I don't, I don't hold it against them. But uh, I understand, you know, in different in different areas, people treat work differently. We they don't they don't operate the same. But I figure on on on, on our level, hey, we treat you know. Uh, I'll look after you. You look after me. And or don't, but don't 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 work it with the idea that you're going to rob me. You know, by being a nice guy. You know, and. Uh, but uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And this guy, and how he worked up, how he kissed his way up, up, up in, uh, in the nobility, and uh, man, and uh, he was supposed to be a, a, an expert in uh, artillery. And when his guy, when his mind lined up because they didn't, uh, they didn't have to do the thing right, thought nothing with a whip or something like that. The guy's lined up and he he just belled him, nodded, and he could kill him, and that was it. It was all right. Now, my father, when he came from my grandfather, I I should say it because that's not it'll be not safe. Anyway, so he was the boss in his home. You don't mess. Well, he loved his uh, good, good, you know, <laughs> the car swap was that was the gin mill, and uh, that was the first place that he went to when he came from uh, when, when uh, the Russian Japanese War. They had sent him over there, and when he came back, and my father told me that my father said that now. You know, you come back from the war, you've been away for a couple of years. First thing you want to go, go home, see the family. Are you kidding? My father said he always remembered him and the rest of the kids, and even the wife, running through the snow barefoot to see the father in the gin mill. <laughs> and I, so, and, and yes, so anyway, he was a great one. He loved his book. But the part is this. When he sat down to eat, nobody cuts the bread until he cuts it first. Otherwise, your, your, your brains would just be rattling. He was the boss. And uh, like this one night, the, my father said the last night, there was the three oldest bro, uh, sons. The, the, the last time he was home, he says, the old man come back from the gin mill, and he starts, one kid, right, up until the wife, beats them all up. For what? He never stayed, they never stayed around long, because he said, what they did is the three boys grabbed the old man, they tied him up, <laughs> that was the last time they were home. Because he says, otherwise, 
just as soon as he got himself loose, he could kill every one of them. And it was all right. It was acceptable. That's living. It's, it's hard to believe. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it when my father told, you know, when I heard, when he told me. And then I see this book about this guy, a nobleman. And it was, and this, this was back in the 1800s. And I says, now I can see why the people have so little trust in their superiors. From the, from the way they, they can be treat them. My father told me one time in an apple orchard, they were picking apples and whatnot. Now here's one guy who didn't work there. Comes over, picks up an apple, bit into it. The overseer saw him. Next thing you know, yanks his pants down, takes a whip to him, the guy's butt. And the guy is screaming, you know, with the, to God. And, and all the overseer says, look, don't ask God. I'm the one that's having you whipped. How the hell do you live a life like that? Now you can see why why they got these gulags and they're they're, they're supposed out of, out of uh, you know they're out of style for them. But like this uh, Nina, she was was still uh, and when she was talking, and I says, you got to be a Russian. Yeah, she 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 was born and brought up in Siberia. Then they came over. Well educated, but uh, the whole thing, you know, and, and the thing about it, uh, right then and there, you know, as long as she was my teacher, you know, it's acceptable, but forget it. <laughs> I used to talk to her like, like anyone else. Great, I'm telling you, 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 there was so much, you know, actually, when you take a look at a lot of things. There is so much in life to learn. You know, you only wish you, you that that you could take it all. You know, and just just keep going through it like you're like 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 a glutton. You know, there's all this information there. You know, the, the things you can learn about people and about how it's just that it's uh, sometimes you, you well sometimes I wake up at night there's something and I said I'll be damned. It. Why do I have to wake up in the middle of the night and get the answer? Why the heck didn't I think of it before I went to bed? <laughs> it's, it's great uh, that, uh, but uh, I never did. I, I I know my father didn't like it, <laughs> but, but so when he was told me about his father, my grandfather, and I said, you know, Pa, if I had a chance, I said, I'd like to meet that little sob. <laughs> Your father, my grandfather, because boy, he was. As a matter of fact, my, my father was saying uh, they used to walk to school, and when they were disciplined, they would roll up their pants legs, put pebbles on the floor, and and make you kneel on, kneel on it. So he says, my uh, he, my father came home crying. So my grandfather says, uh, what happened? He told him. He says, did you do that? He says, no. Because he says, I knew that if that kid was lying to me and I found out about it, it was going to be hell to pay. So anyway, the old man is leaning against the, the, the they had, you know, even, even now you'll see the, the, the fences in the front of the yard. And the old man is leaning up against the gate. The teacher comes walking down the street Hey, come here. He went over about his son. Well, he says, he told me that he was disciplined for the wrong thing. He didn't do it. You did it. You went ahead. You did. Well, that was the last time that teacher was seen in the area. Because the old man just beat the little. <laughs> That's all it was to it. He went back in the house. When you do that to my son, you got your hands full. <laughs> he would, 
And this is, and, he, and I, I could see. But see, eventually what happens, they had, they owned property. They had, but what is happening as, uh, you, you see in, in Europe, they run into a lot of that, which uh, has got to do with, uh, uh, now the oldest son is going to get married. Okay, so part of your property, you give, you give him a piece, that this is yours. Well, eventually, you're going to wind up with a place about the size of a postage stamp. You know, and eventually, you, know, you, you just outgrow. You can't get away from it. You know, it's a good thing if you got, if you got uh, acre, acreage galore. You know, like some of our ranches, they got 1,000 acres or so. Right. But over there, you, it, it just isn't there. You can't make it. But uh, see, it was there was so much to be learned. I, I and uh, just just to pick up there, and there are so many differences. I, I I don't know. I just I just couldn't. Uh, you know, in other words, you, it's it's like shoveling snow. You can you can go along, and then all of a sudden you come to one, you can't move it. It's it's just that. Uh, and yet you'd like to, you know, but uh, it, oh, it, it was so. So consequently, his aunt, who lived a, a little ways, up, so when the boys went over to her house, you know, and she says, "Look," she says, "I know," and that and that was my grandfather's sister. She says, "I know you can't go home. I know I don't want you staying here because he's going to be a." You know, evidently she didn't get along with him either. But she she, she uh, offered money to her, the three sons. Never went back to Russia. They wound up in the coal mines there in, in uh, and uh, Wilkes-Barre, Nanticoke. And, uh, but just out of curiosity, that, that little son of a, I, I'd like to. But you know damn well, my, my mother had a picture of him. The rest of the family is standing there. Who's sitting? The old man in a sit. He's the boss. <laughs> Everybody else is standing up there. <laughs> but, and I says, just for the hell of it. I'd like to. <laughs> but, and you know, I'll be darned that he outlived the, the, the three boys that uh, that came here. Wow. He was in his 90s. And I says, how the hell? <laughs> I says, Did it all live the revolution? And yeah. How the I says, he must he must he must have softened up because I says either either the Germans were gonna kill him I says or the Russians, but he was uh, oh, but but it's interesting you know, to see just to bump into him, you know to to see what the heck what do I came what I came from. <laughs> Did you ever see Russian ships at sea? Yes, and you know what's the funny thing? Freighters or warships. Uh, yeah, you would see the, 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 the uh, uh, warships, when you see the, the, the Russian, they have a, uh, a, a very sharp, uh, bow. See, ours, uh, it's, it's sharp, but it's, it's not as sharp as the, as the, the, the Russian, the Russian is almost like that, when they're going, and, uh. The the uh, but so some of the they just I don't know it seems like for those people they just didn't give a damn. You know I I can see you know being leery about some about some people, but like I obviously hey you got uh, because my my son he's he's got uh, uh, over here what the heck is it he, he uh, when he, he he manages there's about about three or four different buildings that he. That he's in charge of, and uh, and he's always he's always been a believer that uh, there's a lot of information. Like for about sixteen years, he worked in, at Pratt. He went through a, a, a apprentice program, and then the, the fellow across the street, John uh, uh, Lopes, was a lead man. And my my son was in in, in, in engineer, engineering. Yeah, I got it. So anyway, so what he did, 
he always, a lot of the other engineers, MIT and whatnot, you know, that uh, he didn't come from there. But the, I think that he'd make he'd make the, some of these engineers look sick. What what he knew that they didn't, and he was to find out a lot of time got a problem. He said, "Go down." He used to he used to work on the floor before he got, got up. But uh, so he says, "I'd go talking to these uh, like like John John Leadman and whatnot," and he says the pointers I used to get from them the easiest way to make things. But they wouldn't talk because the engineers beneath their dignity to, to, to hey, I'm asking him. Right. And uh, he says, Every, anything, anytime he, he needed any, any answers or any problem, he says, all he had to do was go down there, start talking to the guys. That's why, like over here, now he's got an office, but he is not, You, if you're looking for a guy for a suit and tie, you're not looking for a wall. He's got his own office, <laughs> and when you see him go on the floor, he's on with his hands on. He says, and you, when you look at the floor you, and you're looking for a guy, you know, dressed up, no. <laughs> he, he, he looks like one of the other guys. And he the obviously on this said, look, hey, I know what you guys can do. I want you guys to, you know, uh, support me. You know, hey, don't, don't, don't try any of this fancy stuff with me. He says, I've been around the, I've been around the block. I know what goes on. He says, you look after me. I'll look after you. And so you go looking for him, and chances are pretty good. Like if you walk down the floor and you say, hey, uh, who's Walt? And the chances of very good, could very well be you're talking to him because you think he's one of the guys on the machine. But he is, uh, he's, he's right there. And it just so happened that uh, the fellow that's, that's in charge, the old, old, old manager, uh, well, one, one, one uh, place in Farmington that he was to manage, uh, the, uh, the son was retired from the military, from the army. So he was going to, his father owned the business, so he was going to do it the military, the army way. Okay. So anyway, he come and told my my son that uh, we won't be needing you anymore. Uh, now here's a guy that was seven, seven days a week. He was always available. Even when he's home, the, 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 the phone would ring. He got... So, uh, and then, like the old, his father said, look, he says, I'll make it worth your while. Hey, a, the pay was damn good. But he, he was, he, he earned it. There was no, uh, there was no holidays, no nothing, but he was always available. So they decided they didn't need him anymore. So he says, okay. So he went. Uh, there's a, there's a, he has some connections. So he went to see them and, uh, they lined up this job here in uh, South Windsor. And, uh, so anyway, he says, I, I went to, uh, I went there, you know, to, to talk as, in, in, for an interview. And he says, uh, there was supposed to be an, an hour uh, one of the, uh, a secretary was supposed to interview him. So he says, okay. He says, well, so now, she says, I'm all through. He says, uh, I'll get uh, Mr. So-and-so. I, I don't know the guy. And he'll talk to you. The guy comes in the door. Walt looks at him. He looks at him. Walt. Hey, Walt, what the hell are you doing here? He says, I'm looking for a job. You got it. They were building those extra because they they used to work together. He says you got the job. Now he says, see those buildings out there? They're going up. You're going to run them. And man, alive! <laughs> so he says that's the best place I ever worked with. See, because there were changes going on with uh, with with Pratt. 
the, the old car, see, because there was a lot of guys that, he was, what, what was easy to get get along with, he'd, he'd do things for they help them out, and they would hide him. A lot of time when he was in the plant, and a lot of these, uh, uh, some of the others were being laid off, so he knew damn well if the other guys saw that, how come I'm being laid off, and this guy is still working? So what they do is they, they would ship him to South Windsor. Uh, he was down in uh, Middletown at the, at the plan, uh, Cheshire. Uh, they, they, and, and this is how they covered him. But then when these uh, begin to retire, and he says, hey, the way they're going off, he says, I got I to gotta make a move. But uh, so he, uh, and he's, it's, it's about a five-minute drive from here to this place, or that place on, at the home. And uh, and the thing about it is, when he talks on the phone, or or you take like, what? At, at noon, he, he used to come down, and not only my, my wife before he, he she passed away, uh, he used to go and help feed her and whatnot, she, and uh, then he would come at night, a couple hours, see if he could feed her. And then he used to do the same thing, but he wouldn't feed me. <laughs> but they knew him. <laughs> and just as soon as, now he would come in the door and somebody would tell him, hey, uh, Walt, uh, Mr. Swokla, not, not, not uh, your, your, uh, your father is uh, still in his room. Or if, or if I was down having my uh, supper or, or dinner. And, Right, but the way the way uh, any of these people, you know, you could tell th this was not an ordinary guy, and <coughs> and the thing about it is that what used to get me is I never went to a doctor without him being there, and I was saying. I'm willing to bet that a lot of time when he's talking to doc those doctors think that this guy's got to go do something with medical because his his daughter is a uh, my my, uh, my uh, nurse, but he he over there talking and, and, and a lot of these things the, 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 the doctors are not actually actually sure, you know when he's talking about vitamins and a lot of this other stuff that he he's right there, and uh, so anyway. Now, I had to go up to Vernon to, to have this, and uh, so he, uh, six o'clock in the morning, I was up there, you know, to, to, for, for the operation. We are all set. I'm there. My son is there. Doctor's there. The uh, Adua, yeah, Adua, did, did the work. He's got his uh, assistants. This one idiot and a doctor, but you see, it isn't like it used to be. Now, one time, if you went to a doctor, a surgeon, one, uh, he set up his uh, crew. You didn't have to call him. Like my son used to have to call the doctor. Are you available and such and such and, and whatnot? Whereas all you do is you talk to your doctor. If he's going to do the job, he had the, he had the the whole crew there. You went down, you were taken care of. So anyway, and I, well, this doctor here that, that's connected with this, uh, with this home. <laughs> so he, uh, and boy, you want to see that doctor. The first time I met him, and I'm sleeping, and all of a sudden, I, and I said, what the hell are you doing here? He said, well, I'm your doctor. Well, I said, but at least put the light on her for the sake so I could see who was doing it. I said, <laughs> I said, you know, you're, you're liable to be, you know, and then you don't know what the heck's going on in these places. So, but when you, when you met him on, or passed him on the floor, you knew. That suit that he wore would fit nobody but him. Was it what the 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 the, the, the in other words, he couldn't pass the suit on to anybody else because that suit would not fit 
because every nick and everything was just just for him. Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> this is your two middle house. And yes, hey, he was on a bill. You know? <laughs> but uh, I'll have to admit, though, when I come back from Vernon, oh, but anyway, so we're waiting. And my, and my, my son is, the doctor is, is fuming. He says, here, and my son said, hey, one thing, I don't want to see that on my bill, that we're sitting here, and that's... <laughs> so, uh, no, he says, there was something about the infection. He says, uh, I won't sign. And he left. Bingo! And, and I was in a stupor, so I didn't know what the heck. <laughs> I, but uh, I, I know... So, what's his name? Uh, this other... Uh, the, the doctor says... Took a, because they have slots, and, and he puts his name in, whatever slot, Monday to you, and put his name down, slammed it, and he said, tomorrow we're going to have, I don't give a damn who's here, we're going to go. <laughs> anyway, the next day, they, uh, and my, my son did say that they they uh, they didn't put that, that extra charge, that, that, that we were there, but the doctor didn't want it the, the last minute. He says, you know, I, I have gotten so fed up. And yet, you know, it's amazing. I, met, I, I have met a lot of nice people. A lot of them. Now, I had a problem after this. Got these, what the heck do they call it? Spasms up my leg. You know, for, after, after the operation. And man, usually about 9 o'clock it would start. And oh, and your limit is how much how much medication you could take, <laughs> and so uh, and they would do. They felt it more than you did, you know. They, they, something they got to do for you, you know. To, to easy, they, they they know that the 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 pain is there, but they they've got to help you out. Uh, so I know this one nurse there. And man, I was going across, I was not only up the side the, the, the walls, across the ceiling. And boy, oh God, I'm, I, I was really, really to, to, you know, I can't get out of bed. But I felt like I wanted to tear that damn put. <laughs> and would you, Mr. Soko, you can't, you got, you got four hours before we get. I said, so finally, I said, is there a doctor in charge? Oh, she says, we can't call him unless it's an emergency. I said, by hell, I says, what's going on through, through me? I said, it's an emergency, at least to me. I said, give me his phone number. I said, you know, I, I, I bump into so many of these guys that sit on their duffs, they're warm in bed, and you flunky's got to go in here and, and carry the ball for him. Give me his phone number. She wouldn't give it to me. I says, I'll get that bastard. <laughs> you don't have a way to bleep it out, do you? Oh, yeah, no, we, we can go back and edit it. But, uh, oh, what was that? I was going to ask you about, now you said that the Germans off of Norway and going up into through Russia. So did you ever actually see any U-boats? No. But there were torpedoes, ship's torpedoes. That's when you knew. That's when you, funny. yeah, when you when you saw the ship blossom, you knew the guy was there. And a lot of time, because at that time they started bringing these uh, little uh, carriers, and they used to, carriers. yeah, and uh, they they used to every they, they take off, you know, because from the party, you know, it's odd that you can see him from the air. The submarine, the shadow of the submarine, down there. But on the same level, you don't, you, you know, it, it just, it just isn't there. That's why when they, uh, the, when they start having these uh, uh, in the North Atlantic, these uh, pl these planes, they were a heavy. They were they, they they were just lumbering along, but but they could they multiple engines. Yeah, they had two uh, two engines and. Uh, 
you felt good when you because you know damn well when you when you're going you come off of uh, Greenland, uh, Iceland, and whatnot, and they would uh, what's his name? Then you, you you had a feeling that somebody's looking after you, and uh, 